Welcome to Comics with Dan, uh, and today let's look at some kids' books at Baltimore Comic Con. To be fair, there weren't many kids' books scattered through the comics that I was looking through in the, the long boxes and that sort of thing, but that doesn't mean there weren't any kids' books. First, I met up with Stephanie from Paper Cuts, which is an imprint of Mad Cave Studios. Just for your information, an imprint is a publisher that makes specific kinds of books for a larger publisher. So if DC Comics is the main publisher of DC comic books then DC Graphic Novels for Kids is their kids imprint. So Paper Cuts is the kids imprint of Mad Cave Studios. This makes sure that age-appropriate comics get into your hands. So let's hear what Stephanie has to say about what's coming out for Paper Cuts. What do you, what do you got here for us? For so Yap. here we have Yap. Sorry, I always say it wrong. Yogs. <laughs> Yogs is a really fun series. This is actually Art Baltazar's first series, which he's like revamped with these creative characters, the Cranobi, and specifically the chosen one, uh, Kraby, who's got like a cute little nose. He's in the inside. It's a very fun young middle grade title that's a fun series. Um, it's got Art Baltazar's signature style. Um, yeah, oh yeah, comics. Um, and here's book two, The Gouache War. And then, let's see, we have Jackson's Wild Adventures by Savannah Local, uh, Sarah Davidson. Sarah Davidson spoke with an animal expert to get all of this fact checked. Uh, this is a series about a young boy named Jackson and his imaginary best friend, Erwin the Thylacine, as they learn about animals and how they relate to like everyday life problems. So in Habits and Habitats, the first book in the series, uh, Jackson is moving and that's really distressing. And the way they talk about this is with actually um, climate change and the ways in which habitats are also changing. Um, so there's a lot of great animal facts which have all been verified, and Sarah Davidson wrote, drew, and lettered the whole book. And then here is a book called Double Booking. This is a, uh, sorry, these were all creator-owned titles. But Double Booking is a flip book written by siblings. So you read one side and then you flip it for the second story. And each half is written by one of the two siblings. Um, it's about perspectives. So in this story, the brother and sister Otto and Nan go on an adventure to Egypt because of their mom's job, and they accidentally unleash the mummy cat, but only Otto can see it. So on the sister side, she's like, you're crazy. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, it's a little educational. It's very fun, and the same artist drew it, but it looks very different on both sides. Um, yeah, so that's also a very fun title. Nice. Yeah. You got some Disney ones here. Yeah, and then we have Disney and we have like heebie-jeebies as well. That one's our most recent release. Nice. Thanks so much to Stephanie for the inside scoop on what Paper Cuts is doing. Uh, I actually bought Jackson's Wilder Adventures, uh, a Paper Cuts book from the stand there uh, when I was at Baltimore Comic Con, uh, and my kids are loving it so far. Uh, additionally, uh, I'm hoping to be doing some more kids' reviews on books coming from Paper Cuts, so make sure you keep an eye out for those. If you already read comics, then you might know Tiny Titans. Tiny Titans is a DC comic for kids that introduces all sorts of characters to the new generation. One of the writers of Tiny Titans, as well as the writer and artist of many other children's books, Franco, is here to answer some questions for us. Here we've got Franco. He is the ultimate kids comic artist, ultimate comic artist, really. He's got more than oh, just man. more than just kid stuff, but um, you can see he's good. got a great table set up here. Um, all kinds of cool stuff here. It looks like he's doing some some coloring here as well. Yeah, man. So I'm just gonna get a few questions in. Um, actually, the first thing I wanted to say is, I um, uh, hopefully I don't get emotional. With this. <laughs> I had to move across the state of Pennsylvania, and um, I had to move a month before my family could move over. Wow. And so I was without my. I mean, she was probably three or four years old at that point. Oh, that's rough. Um, and uh, every night we would FaceTime and read Tiny Titans together. Oh wow! And so that's like a that's like a memory. I'm I'm never gonna forget that. Oh man, so that's, that's so cool. Yeah, I I, I so I'm I'm always gonna love that book. But um, but so Tiny Titans, uh, Superman Family Adventures, uh, they're great books to get kids interested into like comics, right? Yeah. Um, what comics got you interested uh, into comics as a kid? Uh, oh, man, it was uh it was everything. I I would read um. You know, Spider-Man, superhero stuff. I would read, you know, um, Archie stuff. I would read, um, you know, uh, Richie Rich, mm, th those yeah. guys and stuff like that. But 
Uh, Spider Man and Batman are the are the two yeah. that really kind of yeah. suck me into comics. Yeah, and then what other? I mean, obviously, other than the great ones you're putting out, what other comics that are coming out now do you think could get kids kind of that next generation of readers? Um, mostly anything of mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a uh, I have a Flash Gordon series come comes yeah. out in, uh, yeah. in November. Um, uh, they just announced my new creator-owned project called Chase Speedington, which mm -hmm. comes out next year. Um, uh, yeah, so it, my stuff, but there's a lot of great stuff. Like, uh, you know, uh, Chris Heliopoulos is mm -hmm. doing those, uh, those books with Brad Meltzer, and, and those are great books, even though, um, you know, they're not really, I guess, 100% comics, but they yeah. kind of have, a, you know, they do a bunch of superhero ones as well. So there's stuff like that, but there, there's a lot of great stuff out yeah. there. Um, yeah, yeah, look absolutely. At, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you and you and Art Baltazar work uh, a lot of the super pets into your stuff. Yeah. Um, was this inspired by your own pets or a love of pets or you know what kind of brought that about? Yeah, we we grew up reading those comics where you know like Aquaman would have you know his his pet seahorse with yeah. him and and you know Superman would have crypto and stuff like that. So they were always around in comics when we were reading them. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I don't know that they were necessarily inspired by our own pets but mm -hmm. just kind of we read them and we're like yeah. oh they belong in here they do yeah so that's that's <laughs> why we would always put them in there yeah yeah so. did you um did you get a chance to see the dc super pets movie that came out um okay this is gonna sound really bad yeah okay so i've started watching it like three different times yeah and uh <laughs> i i've fallen asleep not uh, to say it's bad. Right, I, right. I heard it was good, and I liked what I saw. Yeah. Uh, and the last time I saw it, like every single time, and maybe I shouldn't watch it on a plane. Uh, that's yeah. where I, where I watched it, yeah. and uh, uh, you know maybe the motion of the plane is just putting me to sleep and stuff. Right. So, right. so uh, I got to sit and watch it. But I, I, I like the first half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I can never, I can never get through a whole movie anymore. I have yeah. to split into two nights anymore. But um, yeah, my kids have watched that. I mean, probably ten yeah. times at this yeah, point. Now, but, now yeah. you made me feel real guilty. So now next week I probably You're gonna watch it. Yeah, all right, I have to all watch. Right. It I'll I'll look for a for a post on it saying <laughs> how great it was. Um, so if you could do like an ongoing series with DC right now, uh, which character would you want to tackle oh, wow. to kind of push a new generation of readers into that character? Ooh, um, I don't know. That's a tough one. We we've done a lot of the different characters, but mm -hmm. if you're talking about maybe doing a, a kid centric. Um, series, yeah, more maybe. like like on all ages type thing. No, yeah. like, I, I think maybe I, I'd go um, classic Blue Beetle and Booster, maybe. Mm, yeah, um, just to kind of yeah do something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I love Justice League International, so that's yeah. the yeah, that's the best <laughs> answer. Yeah. So, um, do you find working on your own characters like like Action Cat, um, or or I guess not not a uh, big two publisher characters? Do you find that more challenging, more rewarding, both, neither? Uh both uh, yeah. i'd say it's more rewarding because it's it's my own character mm -hmm. and, and we can do whatever we want you know yeah. there's no real editorial oversight saying oh you can't do this because or you can't do that you know because we're using this or whatever um but the the challenge is that they're not as well known as as some of the dc stuff you know like batman everybody knows batman you know like uh chase speedington my new book who's that you know, so I'm, I'm going to have to introduce him to what he can do and everything. So there, you know, there's goods, goods and bads with both. Yeah. Yeah. No. And so, and you mentioned this earlier, but what can you tell us about the upcoming Flash Gordon book? Uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's just, uh, um, you know, if you've read anything, tiny Titans or, or anybody Hellboy or anything like mm -hmm. that, oh yeah, comics that we've done, it's basically a bunch of vignettes like that, that, yeah. that tell an overall story. But awesome. you know, it's like these, these, a uh, couple of humans are transported to this world yeah. where there's beast men and, and all yeah. these other creatures like shark men and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, just these guys just navigating their way around and it's, uh, it's pretty funny, you know. Like we we, we make a, a a lizard cloning machine uh, mm. in there, and and there's just it's just silly stuff, you know. It's yeah. hard to describe, but when you're reading it, you're like, oh, that's that's just silly and fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and it's it's exciting because I didn't I never got into Flash Gordon before, but um, Mad Cave recently started putting out the the yeah. regular series there, and so it was exciting to see that um, that you'd be doing a, a Flash Gordon one as well because yeah. then I can you know share that with my kids. So awesome. it's cool to see the revival there, but yeah, but that's, um, that's everything. Thank you so much for, oh, oh, yeah, um, for, uh, cool. taking the time to talk with me. Awesome. I really thanks. appreciate it, man. All right. All right thanks. Bye. Thanks so much to Franco for taking the time to answer questions. Just to give some information. Franco's new flash Gordon series is out this November and is also a paper cuts book.
I'm definitely going to be posting a review of this Flash Gordon book, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. Make sure you like the video, make sure that you subscribe, and thank you for watching.